so what could this be? What is the eighth wonder of the world? What is the derivative of e to the x? Why is this so special? Now, just to make sure you realize, and I, I think you do, but I always like to kind of start this way. Every function we've looked at in this chapter, it's like it's had a different derivative, right? You know, we started with x squared. That has a pretty simple derivative. Sine of x, that had kind of a neat derivative. And now we finally get work our way to another kind of function. Now, this is called an exponential function. Maybe back from algebra, I hope not maybe, but back from algebra and trigonometry when you continue to learn about these kinds of equations. So it's a special graph. You know, maybe you're picturing the graph of e to the x. A lot of kids, you know, respond and say, yeah, Ms. Nero, that's exponential growth. You're right. It's exponential growth. Uh, it's a unique graph. That means it has a unique derivative. It has a unique derivative. You know, a unique slope. Of course, every time I say derivative, you say slope. So what could it be? What could be the slope of e to the x? What could be the derivative of e to the x? Tell me, please. Well, I'm going to show you graphically. I'm going to show you graphically. Now, you can play along. I mean, it's kind of neat to get your character to do it, but you can also fully experience this by watching. I, I will caution, don't get mixed up with playing along that you actually miss what happens, but you can play along. And I, that's why I'm saying it. We're going to see the derivative graphically, something that we haven't done too much of. You actually did this on that little investigation back at the middle of the chapter. You guys would have done this with the multiple choice at the end of that. Okay, now to, to see this graphically, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the calculator to graph the derivative. Okay, now I can't just say, hey, calculator, graph the derivative. You know, this technology is actually the same technology we had when I was in high school, believe it or not, some 25 years ago. So there was no like voice recognition. But you can type in using the n derived command. Okay, it's a command that you guys have fooled with a little bit, not much, but I just want you to know what we're doing. We're graphing the derivative. So, hey calculator, graph the derivative. You have to go to the math menu. You have to go to the math menu and find the n derived command if you're gonna play along. Now we're gonna graph the derivative of e to the x. And so that means I have to type in e to the x. Oops. Um, ah, I just deleted it. <laughs> I have to type in e to the x. It would be kind of cool if that's like all I had to do, or maybe I should say it'd be kind of simple, because it kind of makes sense right now. It's like, okay, we're gonna graph the derivative of e to the x. But the calculator doesn't understand all that. It needs some more coding. Now, some of the newer calculators, your right now, yours looks a little different. It's more like, uh, it's more like, what am I looking for? Um, you have like a DDX on your calculator. Uh, most of you actually, if I look around, you don't. You would have the same thing in mind. But if yours looks a little different, you're still going to type in an X. That stands for DX. That's like the variable that we're doing. And then normally you would have one more comma and you would have a number here because normally you'd want to be finding the derivative at some X value, like at three or five, but we're trying to do it at all X values. So actually type another X. And if your calculator looks a little different here, you have like a little bar and you would also put the letter X in that bar. Hey, calculator, graph the derivative of e to the x. Okay. Now, I know what's going to happen here, so I want you to, I want to you to experience it. And to experience it, I'm going to also graph e to the x. You can understand this if you're like, why are you doing that? You're going to see in a second, but I'm going to graph e to the x. Okay. Now, I'm making it bold because I want it to stand out. I want to 
you to see it as a different graph. One more thing, if you want this to be really cool, you gotta make the window kind of match an exponential function. Um, I'm gonna go from zero to uh, seven because we don't need a lot of x values for something to get very large. I'm also going to go uh, from like 0 to, oh, I guess maybe 200. Maybe because things get very big very quickly. Well, you're dying to see what happens. So, I mean, hit the graph button, but then I'll do it on mine too. If you were kind of just waiting for me, that's fine. I'm going to show you now. Do you realize what the conclusion is? What's the derivative of e to the x? Now, here comes the derivative. You can kind of cheer it on. Here we go, derivative. That's the derivative. Here comes e to the x. And so what do we see? The derivative of e to the x is... Same. The same. It's e to the x. Wait, the derivative of e to the x is itself? Yes, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Yes, this is something we're celebrating. You always need corn again if you got something to celebrate. One more time. Actually, we can change the words a little bit. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. All right. Now, yes. Now, it is a woohoo. It's pretty cool. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Uh, everybody's going to know it. But do you realize what it's actually saying? This is also kind of cool. I'm going to appeal to my graph again. Just so you know what I'm doing, I'm not trying to pull a fast one on you. I'm just graphing e to the x one time. Um, but of course, that graph has slope. Now, it's interesting because the slope gets very steep very quickly, just like its y values. Here's a spot along this graph. I think it's x equals... I think it's x equals 3. No, it's x equals 4. No, <laughs> I didn't put my dot quite where I wanted. It doesn't really matter. Let's just switch it over here to x equals 4. What am I trying to show at x equals 4? I'm trying to show you that the y value, now check this out, this is kind of like a math wonder. The y value at x equals 4 is also the slope value. That's what it means to say that the graph is the slope. How about the y value at x equals 5? Okay, see what happens when I go to x equals 5? You know the y value gets quite a bit bigger. It gets exponential. But look what happens to the slope. Well, it does the same thing. It gets a lot steeper. That's because the y value at x equals 5 is the slope at x equals 5. Okay? It's the only graph where the graph itself is the slope, which means the y value itself is the slope.
And again, I'm just kind of giving you a chance to process because you know that an exponential graph gets very exponential, but it's the same thing about its slope. Its slope gets very steep uh, in the same exact way. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, again, we want to get that published in Wikipedia as the eighth wonder of the world. I will work on that um, in the midst of everything else this year. Maybe if you guys have any special connections to Wikipedia, you could get that in there. Make sure you remember the definition, but make sure that you also see the sort of official definition. <laughs> the official definition <laughs> is that the derivative of e to the u is e to the u du. Here's this u thing again. Again, simply saying that you have to do the chain rule. You have to do the chain rule. So this time the exponent will have the u. So the exponent will kind of be like the inside of your chain rule. But the outside is e. And that's why you see e to the u being written down. In other words, being left alone. Or I shouldn't quite say it that way. You, you see that the derivative of e is still e, but we leave the inside alone. We leave it as u. And then you always do that chain rule again, which is the derivative of u, the derivative of the inside. Let's do a couple examples that have e to the x. They're kind of neat because of their derivative. So even e to the negative 3x, e to the negative 3x, I know it's pretty obvious because we just said it, but this is obviously an exponential equation. You know, it's got e, it's cut to the x. It's actually to the negative 3x. But my point is that as soon as you see something in the family of e to the x, the derivative is the same. The derivative is the same. Like I'm talking about e, I'm talking about negative 3 and x. It's e to the negative 3x. It's the same thing. You just write it down. But don't forget to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So we actually have to multiply it by negative 3. So we get negative 3 e to the negative 3x. Now for those that want to join the, or that have joined the I Love Math Club, <coughs> for those that have joined the I Love Math Club, there's actually a reason for this negative. It's interesting. There's a reason for this negative. Yes, it's the chain rule, but I'm talking about like a graphical reason. You see, if you think about the graph of e to the negative 3x, it's not exponential growth, but it's, it's exponential decay. Now, I might have my graph slightly off. It might be slightly off, but what's happening here is we need a formula that takes care of that slope. What do you mean takes care of that slope? What kind of slopes do you have on this graph? Every one of them is negative. So now we have a number that makes the slopes negative. Okay, isn't that neat how math works? The chain rule sort of fixes our derivative. Okay, again, our derivative has to be negative all the time. I got that cool in the gang song in the back of my head because it is. It's pretty neat. If you're ever also just kind of feeling down, watch the video of cool in the gang. I mean, guaranteed to kind of happy you up, make you a little more happy. Those guys singing, playing, trumpets, the whole thing. Good stuff e to the x squared, e to the x squared. It's still in the family. It's in that e to the x family. It's called exponential. 
the derivative is the same thing. Isn't that neat how that works? You just write down the same thing. But then you do the derivative of the inside. Then you do the chain rule. Now, the derivative of the inside is like the derivative of the exponent. Okay, so the derivative of x squared, of course, is 2x. Listen, you can leave that answer how it is. I am rewriting it because it is typical to see what we would call a power function before you see an exponential function. It just looks a little better. I'll leave it up to you if you want to rewrite it. So we get 2x e to the x squared. One more. We're having too much fun, so we only have time for one more. Go ahead. Uh, with the first example that we did, could you simplify that more to be over 3x? Or okay. Interesting. It's got a negative exponent, um, and I seem to have kind of changed the rules again. Um, you could simplify it more. You could write it as negative 3 over e to the positive 3x. Um, it's another one of those sort of situations where uh, I, I don't really know why, but it's okay to leave it with a negative exponent because, honestly, because x is in a new place. x is in the exponent. It's kind of like a different family. It's still a negative exponent. You can still simplify it like you asked or change it, I guess. But we actually are okay with it because it's not x to a negative exponent. It's not x to a negative exponent. It's e to the negative exponent. So it's kind of, again, a different family. x cubed e to the 4x. Now, it's got that e to the x. It's pretty cool. It's the eighth wonder of the world. It catches everybody's attention. e to the x. But there's something else that I want you to see. I won't be able to say this on a test. You should already know what the answer is, but there's something else I want you to see. You see it? A it's a product rule. You got to see it. Give me a suggestion if there's another way to help students remember this. Um, sometimes you just got to do the hard work of trying to do it correctly. So when there's a product, it's the product rule first. It's the product rule as your roadmap. Maybe there'll be some kind of cool derivative in there. Like when you do first derivative of the second, or the derivative of the second, yeah, it's a cool derivative. It's e to the 4x times 4. So there you go. But that's the product rule. That's the first part of the product rule. And then the second part of the product rule, well, is the second derivative of the first. So we get e to the 4x times 3x squared. Okay, now, two things, um, and they're important. First of all, we really should put this 4 out front. Maybe you already put it there. You kind of create your answer in the first place the right way. In other words, coefficient, and then x cubed, then x e to the 4x. Um, same thing here, 3x squared really should be out front. And then we get our e to the 4x again. Second thing, okay. As we've talked about a little bit before, sometimes when things can be factored, maybe I shouldn't say it that way, when things can be factored, the solution manual likes to factor. So if you would factor out what is common, your answer looks a little different. I'm not going to make you do this. It's just, I'm trying to be consistent, but it doesn't hurt to see it. If you factor out an x squared, e to the 4x, you get a 4x, and you get a 3. Usually, I will promote factoring when something else happens. Like maybe there was a denominator that canceled with some of this, and you could cross stuff off. Nothing really cancels. We just kind of get a little different look. 
Okay, but certainly you guys are capable of seeing that and understanding it. It's kind of hard to top this, and I'm not saying that we're going to top it, but what I want to do is an application problem with you. Okay, now it's funny, we haven't really done much application. If you think about it, last application we did was position, velocity, acceleration, which is an important application. Um, but I want to mix in another one, sort of just like a kind of a common word problem. Heads up, in the next chapter, it's all application. Okay, but usually kids aren't like, you know, bucking that or upset about it because you want to find out what all this stuff really has, where it really applies. And so the next chapter is the application of derivatives. It's not all word problems. As soon as the teacher says application, it doesn't mean word problem, but sometimes it does. So this time it is. It's a word problem. Um, oh, I forgot I had some graphics here. Okay, but we said that stuff. Basically, that's the chain rule. All right. Application problem. Just kind of a side note here. I was, it's, I knew that this would be the flu problem. And normally it would be like, yeah, that's kind of interesting, the flu. But I know it's on your mind this year. And obviously it's, it's a different situation. So the whole thing with the coronavirus, um, I'm not ready to model it for you. I don't even know what the models are. I'm not sure if anyone knows what the models are. Okay, but in all honesty, when you have kind of like a regular virus, like the flu, what I'm showing you here, it's good math. Like it's completely mathematical. Maybe at some point we'll figure out what the math is for the current virus. I um, hope we can just uh, cure and move, move on. But... Um, Good math, good calculus when it comes to the way like a flu would spread. All right, now just kind of want to walk through a couple questions with you. Um, all good stuff, things that eventually you'll have to be able to do. The main thing we're going to do here is a derivative, but I want to do some questions that just get us thinking a little bit about the application. Here's a common question to ask for the initial amount, the original amount. I always like to say this is not really a calculus question because it doesn't have anything to do with the derivative. It honestly just has something to do with zero. Okay, like you normally do when you're trying to find an initial amount, you can plug in zero. So for this first one here, um, I guess we can just Give it a little check mark here. We're going to plug in zero. And again, just keep in mind, just good basic algebra principles. Because anytime you plug in zero, you're getting the initial amount. You could use a calculator if you had to. I'm going to give you the answer. It's kind of nice. It actually works out to be five. Okay, what I want you to realize is that means that, well, five students, if we're at like a school here, five students kind of came to school with the flu. And you know what happens next, they start to spread it around. But again, the math behind that spread is all embedded here in some calculus. Because when we talk about the way something spreads, we can use the word rate. It's like the rate that people are getting it. And you're going to learn, although you've heard it already, that a rate is the same as a derivative. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the rate, but I just kind of want to get you start to hear this idea that a rate is the same as a derivative. Okay, now if we want to use some notation here, then I could say that we're trying to find P prime. P prime. Let me give you a thought here on this, uh, this derivative. Because um, 
I don't know about you, but I'm not real excited about trying to do a quotient rule. Now, we could do a quotient rule because clearly it's the original equation is a quotient. But here's a little trick that I'm trying to think of. I've even really showed this to you in this certain application. But you have full algebra ability to rewrite this original equation as a negative exponent. We have written things as negative exponents, but they've usually been simple. But just take a look. There's no reason I can't think of this as 100 times the quantity of 1 plus e to the 3 minus t to the negative 1. Okay? And when I say there's no reason I can't do that, there's actually good reason to do that because we've got a nice little chain rule. Okay, we have full ability to find that derivative. You can just do the derivative of the outside. Okay, so you bring down negative 1, you get negative 100. You can leave the inside alone. You can subtract. So all this is, is so that we don't have to do that big crazy quotient rule. Now, make sure we do the derivative of the inside correctly, and that's, I think, where we'll stop here before lunch. But the derivative of the inside would be the derivative of an e. So, yep, I have to write down that e again. But you also have to keep in mind that there's like another inside, and the, the other inside is like the exponent. You see that? You're going to have to do the derivative of the exponent also. That's like the chain rule part. You end up with a, an extra negative 1. You end up with a negative 1. That's the derivative of basically negative t. Negative 100 times negative 1 is 100. And, oh, I still have that uh, e to the 3 minus t. So I still have that. And then I'm going to fix that, that big negative exponent. We're going to fix that to be a positive 2.